this anointed ministry. We are pleased to have you join us live via Facebook, and you will reach us by way of our YouTube channel for Bible study. Don't be alarmed. Yes, you have tuned in to Emmanuel Temple Church of God at 4935 Union Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, in the Walnut Park community, where a musician, author, prophet, and the pastor's pastor, Bishop Ronnie Whittier, is overseer and senior pastor. Also faithfully by his side, Emmanuel Temple's first lady, the anointed summist, musician, prophetess, and author, Lady Winetta Whittier. I'm your instructor tonight, Associate Pastor Dr. Victor J. Whittier. We're glad to have you here and we anticipate a wonderful time in this Bible study. At this time, if you will, join in me with prayer. At this time, we go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, according to Judges 7, 18, we come releasing the sword of the Spirit, dear God, against the powers of hell in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, the USA, and around the world. According to Deuteronomy 32, 41, Lord, letting us know to wet your glittering sword and render your vengeance against the enemies of the city, where racial injustices, COVID-19, and the wickedness in high places and corrupt political systems uh, are happening in this dispensation in the name of Jesus. We need your help. Lord, we release the arrow of the Lord's deliverance in our lives right now. The believers need you, dear Father, according to 2 Kings 13 and 17. And Father, according to Lamentations 3 and 12, dear Father, Jeremiah 51 and 11, you set, Lord, your mark upon our enemies. Your arrows, Lord, are bright and your release, Lord, of your vengeance upon the enemies of the cross. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. We pray for wisdom, Lord, in this prayer, knowledge and understanding. Lord, anoint the presenter and the receiver of your word right now, both in the name of Jesus. We pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Yes, we thank you this morning or this this evening, should I say, and uh, we give God the glory for the opportunity to be before you. Um, just want to just let you all know that uh, Bishop Brady Whittier is doing well. Uh, Lady Winetta Whittier is doing well. And Emmanuel Temple is doing well. And we're glad to be here. Oh, and uh, we want you to just prepare yourself, get your pens, your pencils, uh, your notepads. Uh, I'm the type that when I teach, I, I like to give notes and important points. And we have uh, some very, very important points here and a wonderful lesson prepared for you. And uh, this lesson that we have today that's prepared for you is based on a Sunday school lesson that uh, we had in our Sunday school department uh, several weeks ago. And um, uh, just some beautiful points that I would love to share with you. And the title of this lesson, if you jot this down, the title of this lesson today is Acknowledge Five Things When Stirred by God. Acknowledge Five Things When Stirred by God. Um, there's one thing to have knowledge and then there's one thing to acknowledge. Knowledge is having information, information that you know, that's knowledge. But to acknowledge is to let someone know or to let it be known that you have that information, share that information. So this is what we want to do. We want to share the information that God has given us, share the good news of the gospel, the good news of God's word, because everyone needs to know it. Uh, we're living in a time now where uh, there's, uh, as I you even heard me say in the prayer, that there, there's all types of things going on in this world. And uh, it is our duty as believers to share the word of God and to do it boldly. Uh, the world is doing what they do boldly, and we need to do what we do boldly to the glory of God Almighty. Yes, yeah, so, um, and I want you to take and use for our, uh, uh, make take notes that our, our text today is from Ezra 1, the, or the first chapter, the verses 1 through 11. So that's Ezra 1, 1 through 11. And uh, if you will, I'm going to read uh, Ezra 1 through 5. I'm going to start there and uh, reading. And it reads, Ezra 1, 1 through 5. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. 
the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing. Yes, so uh, King uh, Cyrus was stirred up. Yes, and uh, you will learn later as we go on the importance of being stirred up and uh, how uh, no matter who you are, if God wants to, he will stir you up. Second verse, uh, or as that verse ended, it said, saying, second verse reads, thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and to build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. Verse 4. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beast beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And verse five, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So yes, we all, everybody, not just those that are in authority, but everybody, everybody that's from the top coming down must be. It is important that you are stirred up by God. So we're going to be talking about uh, and acknowledging five things when stirred by God five things. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some, uh, define some words right now um, so that it, you will be clear or there will be clarity in regards to exactly what we're talking about when we say being stirred by God. To stir or to, to be stirred means to move or to cause to be moved, to implement around in order to mix something thoroughly. Yes, and then also a slight physical movement, a commotion is what being stirred or to stir something is. Also, to arouse strong feeling in someone or to move and or to excite. Um, or, and, and also there are some uh, synonyms for the word stir or stirred. When, you, when you're being stirred by God, th these are some of the things that are happening to you as you're being stirred by God. You're being mixed. You're being blended. You're being agitated and you're being beat. You're being whipped and you're being whisked. Uh, and if you know that when someone is uh, making a cake or and they pre they're preparing the mix for cakes, they're, they're, they begin to beat it or whisk it. And they, they begin to mix it and blend it with a blender. And this is what God does with us uh, when he wants to and, and he does stir us. He blends himself into us. He places himself into us and motivates us and uh, agitates us and, and, and encourages us to move. Also, some other uh, synonyms for uh, the word stir or stirred or to, to be aroused, a strong feeling in some water, or to move with excitement or to arouse, rouse, to kindle to inspire, to stimulate, to awaken. And you will see how King Cyrus was awakened. He was quickened uh, also to be animated or to be activated, to be fired up. You've heard that before. I'm fired up. That means you're energized. You're ready to go. And this is what the Spirit of God does in us as believers. He fires us up. Uh, then there's another word is to electrify. When you get electrified uh, by God's spirit, you're, e you're electrified to do what thus said the Lord and to move by the spirit of God. Uh, so let's go on here. And I want you to remember that our focus thought today uh, in this Bible study lesson, if you would focus and remember these, these words here, God seeks to stir his people to do the work he called them to. 
you know what? God wants to. He wants us to be stirred up in him. It is a, a, a part of, a, it is his nature, not a part. It is the nature of God that we, that we be stirred up in him. So he look for us to be stirred up in him. He seeks for that person or those persons who want to grow higher in him, who want to be uh, uh, those who 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 moving forward and God chasers. He's looking for us. So I, I, I want you to be after at the end of this Bible study, it is my goal that you be stirred up that you be stirred up because the, the power of God and the, the spirit of God is what? It's contagious. Yes, it's contagious. It, it motivates you and it, it, it's, it gives you an unction and, a, and an energizing to move forward. And that's what God's spirit does. It energizes. So as we go on here, I have some other uh, definitions that we're going to, going to uh, define at some point. But right now, I just want to talk to you about Cyrus and, and, and why God stirred, was stirred up in him, why the spirit was stirred up in him. But in the kingdom, this is what you will find in this lesson, that in the kingdom of God, there is a significant spiritual event that can stir us up deeply, we who are children of God, and change what? Our thinking our behavior, and our actions. That's what God always wants to do. He wants us to be deeply stirred up that our thinking, that negative and that complacent spirit or that uh, behavior that is ungodly and those actions that do not line up with God's word. He wants us to be so stirred in him that we will chase after him, that we will seek after him and do those things that line up in the word of God. Now, this is what happened to Cyrus in the book of Ezra. Some of the children of Israel were, re were recalled, or, or they recall, should I say, what it was like to worship God. Yes, they, that, that is where they came from, or to be stirred up by God. They knew that because uh, they were a part and, and worshiped in Solomon's temple. Yes, and that was one of the things, one of the temple, the temple that they built. Yet they also recalled the dark days of Babylon, where Babylon uh, stormed into their city with swords whirling and destroyed God's house mm -hmm, and captured God's people. But after decades of bondage, God stirred the heart of a heathen king by the name of Cyrus to give God's people permission to rebuild his house. Now, look. We, we look at what's going on in society now. Uh, we had election time and we have a president elect right now and we have a sitting president. But I want you to know that God has the power to deal with the heart of the king in his own way. If you read on your time, uh, Proverbs, the 21st chapter and the first verse, uh, it, it talks about the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. The Lord is the one that controls the heart of a king. I don't how, care how wicked a person might be who is in charge, that person that is over you. If When God touches their heart, when the Father deal with them, then there has to be a change. They will be doing something and say, I don't know why I'm doing this, uh, but I'm, I'm going to do this. It's because the Spirit of God deals up in high places. Yes, there are spiritual wickedness in high places, but the Almighty God is in high, from on high. He's in high places. And when he get in the heart of a king, a king will do something or that person in charge will do something and they will say, oh, I don't know why, again, why I'm doing that. Come on, you've experienced that, I'm sure on your job where where the person in charge will, will do something and, and you have favor and, and they do that toward you for your good, for, for the effort that you're uh, working toward. So the heart of those in authority, the king, are in the hands of the Lord. And king Cyrus was stirred. Yes, he was. Uh, the word of God lets us know that him being stirred, King Cyrus, in the book of Ezra, it details stories. Yes, stories of Babylonian captivity and the coming back of the promised land. Now, because of Israel's sin, the Lord allowed the Babylonians to defeat God's people. And they took them hostage. They took them uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and they were bound. They were in bondage for decades. Uh, I want to know how many of you know that you've been in bondage 
You've been living and, 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 and part of, uh, of something that is not godly for so long. And the Lord wants to restore you. He wants to revive you. And this is what you'll learn. This is what happened with the children of Israel. They were restored to a place, to the worshiping the uh, Jehovah God that they knew, having that relationship that they were so familiar with. Now, when you read the book of Lamentation, Lamentation speaks of the deep longing of the people of God to return to the land God had given them. Now, I know in your heart when there was a place when you started in the things of God, that, that God placed you and he appointed you in a certain position. But for some reason, you're not walking in that position. You're not walking in the duties. You're not uh, uh, working as uh, uh, I'm going to start naming offices. You're not working in the office as a deacon, as God had called you to and anointed you to do as an usher, as as a minister, as a, as a pastor. As, a, as a, a host, as the parking lot attendant, God wants you to walk in that position and to uh, accept that position. There's no bigger position or one that is considered more prestigious than the other. All are important in the sight of God. Yes, so although during this time of the uh, children of Israel's uh, or the Jewish people's exile, they were treated well at that particular time. They still had a desire to return home. Come on, you could be at a certain place, but there you've heard the saying, there's no place like home. Uh, yes, there's no place like home. There's no place where, where you can get the, the, the feeding of God's word. You can uh, go and, and fellowship at other ministry or something. If the Lord allows you to do so, your pastor to do, allows you to do so, go and fellowship, uh, family and friends day or whatever. But there's no place like that pastor, that ministry that the Lord has placed you under, that, that thing that God has placed you in, in him, uh, there's nothing like it. It's only unique within itself because that's where God appointed you. But during this time for the children of Israel, in their captivity, they began to return to the writings of Moses. See, when we return to what God and how he has placed us in his word, see, our lifeline is in God's word. Then that's when our healing starts. That's where we, that's where we get our healing. That's where our deliverance is in the word of God. So when they returned back to the writing of God's word that came out of the mouth, out of the hand of Moses and the prophets in an effort to understand where they went wrong, then they began to understand that there was hope and they, they began to be stirred up. Yes, they began to be stirred up once again. So out of the word of God, they found a reason to be stirred up by God. And then they, they, they were able to let their faith rekindle. See, and this is what you need to do. You need to let your faith rekindle by getting and staying under the word of God where God has placed you so that you can be where and what God want you to be in him. Now, in the writings of the word of God, and before I even go any further with that, I, wanna, I want to um, define the word proclamation because there was a proclamation in those scriptures that I read there. Uh, I believe in the verses either one, two, which one is it? Verse one, two, or three. One of those, it, it was the proclamation that uh, uh, Cyrus gave. So let's define proclamation here real fast. There. Proclamation is a public or official announcement, especially one dealing with a matter of great importance. So it's a decree that has been placed. Yes, it's a decree that has been, been announced by that person that is in charge. And this decree was uh, proclaimed and it was placed and, and, and put out by King Cyrus. And you know how it was, in the, in, and even more so, excuse me, in the Old Testament. When the king gave a proclamation, it was inherent. It, it was it was necessary that that proclamation was followed, and that you followed, or else you would be in trouble. You stand you would stand uh, 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 in in line to be beheaded or, or thrown to the lions. By all means, you were you were supposed to follow that proclamation. Yes. So a public or official announcement, especially one dealing with a matter of great importance. So in the writings of the prophet Isaiah, pr prophet Isaiah, uh, some 150 years earlier uh, than, than Cyrus, the Lord had prophesied of Cyrus and said in Isaiah 44 and 28, that's 44 Isaiah 44 and 28, 
that thus saith the Lord of, of Cyrus, uh, is I am your shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thou foundation shall be laid. He also prophesied in Isaiah 45, 13, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall let go of my captives, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. Oh, Lord. So this was prophesied. This was prophesied that there, that God would have a king he, and he would speak into the his, by his spirit to that king. And that king will move under the unction of God and build a temple and, uh, be, and let the people free and even have the people be revived to their God. Yes. So let's get into those uh, acknowledgments, five acknowledgments that you must remember. OK, let's talk about those here. The uh, acknowledge, acknowledge five things when stirred by God. So let's talk about some of those here briefly here. Let's talk about the first one. Acknowledgement one. Number one, acknowledge the Lord God of heaven has spoken to you and no one else. That's number one. Acknowledge that the Lord God of heaven has spoken to you and no one else. This is what Cyrus done. Cyrus acknowledged that it was the almighty God that has spoken to him. And, uh, and if you think about it, obviously the Hebrews would have been excited to hear that a ruler named Cyrus was in charge. But at the same time in Babylon, but their hearts, you know, would have leaped within them at the knowledge of what God was doing on their behalf. If you read Ezra 1, 1 through 2, it tells us that the, the Lord stirred up Cyrus. Yes. And it, and it reads, now in the first year, Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord from the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation. There we go right there in that first and second verse that he made a proclamation. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Now, as I read and, and studied this uh, and I looked at the background of King Cyrus, King Cyrus was a Persian. And uh, so he wasn't worshiping Jehovah uh, as the children of Israel were. So why would he be stirred up by uh, 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 the uh, Jewish people's God? Or why would he be stirred up by Jehovah? You know why? Because the Lord stirs up whom he please. The Lord want you to be stirred up. He want your friends to be stirred up. He want the people on your job to be stirred up. And you know, who did God use? He used Cyrus and God wants to use us. He wants to use me. He wants to use you. Every one of us, we're conduits for the stirring of God's spirit. We're conduits for the moving of God's word. Uh, the Lord stirred up spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation, stirred him up, that he began to write. Yes, and that's what God will do with you. He'll stir you up that you will begin to write. You will begin to, to say, <coughs> excuse me, what thus said the Lord, no matter what. This is what the Lord did, God did for King Cyrus. And the word of God says here, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven. There we go. That's number one. The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house. Yes, at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So that's number one. Remember, number one of the uh, acknowledge five things when stirred by God. Number one, acknowledge the Lord God of heaven has spoken to you. Look, this is what Cyrus did. He acknowledged that it was the Lord God of heaven that had spoken to him, no one else. So this is what we need to do as believers, as children of God. We need to acknowledge that God has spoken to us to do his word. That's number one. We need to speak it and say, yes, the Lord has called me to be a deacon. 
Yes, the Lord has called me to preach the word of God. The Lord has called me to do his ministry or whatever that might be. He has, he has anointed me. He has spoken to me to pass out tracts. He's spoken to me to have a ministry uh, uh, on the uh on the train, a, a ministry on the corners, a, a ministry uh, at the store. Uh, uh, but he has anointed. It was him. It was no one else. It was the Lord God in heaven. Yes, so it was not something Cyrus had decided to do, people, or planned on his own. The word of God stirred literally, uh, literally stirred him. And this is what the word stirred means. It literally means awaken. And this is what happened to King Cyrus. He was awakened. In other words, the Lord was awakening Cyrus to his uh, uh, God-given purpose of why he was ruling over Babylon. Yes, it was the hand of God working on him to affect the rebuilding of the temple. Don't you know the Lord want, want, want to deal with us? He wants us to, to stir us up that we can build in the house of God right there to do what thus say the Lord. Um, I was watching a news report on the other night. Uh, uh, May, I think it was probably in the afternoon of the, the Tonight Show where uh, 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 that they were talking about nightly news, where they were talking about uh, in the city of St. Louis, around the country, that there are there is building more than it has ever been. There is building going on. There is construction. So the word is, is that construction is the best field, one of the best fields to be in right now. There is a shortage of construction workers. So there's a lot of building going on. But I come to let you know this evening that the most important building that you can do is building in the things of God, building in the kingdom of God. Uh, they that labor, labor in vain, unless their hands are put to build the things of God. We need to make sure that we're, we, we have our uh, investment in the things of God. So yes, in other words, the Lord was awakening him. It was the hand of God working to rebuild the temple. Yes, so in the rebuilding, and he wanted to release his people. So God is building and releasing. God has always had a plan and a purpose for his people. At this critical time that in history, he awakened the people to his purpose. And even in this critical time that we have right now, people, this is a very critical time. This is a time for you to speak. This is a time for you to let God use you. You have a voice. You can be used by God. God wants to use you. As I stated, uh, the focus thought or, or the, the, uh, the thought that I wanted you to remember in this lesson tonight was that God seeks. It is what he looks at. He seeks to stir his people to do the work he called them to do. So he's seeking. He wants to take us higher. He wants us to put our hands to the plow and look back. The word of God and to not look back. The word of God states that any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. But God wants, the Father wants you to, 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 to find new things. He wants you to go to your pastor or the pastor and say, uh, Pastor, the Lord put on my heart to do this. Or the Lord put on my heart to, to put this program on for the the youth or the Lord put on my heart to do this. Uh, the, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me to do this. And there's not enough of that. But if you look in society right now, if you look at what's going on in the world, people are starting new programs and there's, they're doing all types of things. But in the kingdom of God, it's, it appears, this is what it appears to be, people of God. It appears that those who are believers are the ones who have stepped back. We're the ones who have uh, the, done what this one word says, punked out. We're the ones that have, have frozen up. But the ones, folks, it appears that those who are out there, who, are, who don't even name the name of Christ, who haven't departed from iniquity, those are the ones that are building programs and, and doing all the things and getting funding. But God wants us, we, we, the word of God says that we're the ones that turn the world upside down. The kingdom of God, a kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We're the ones need to take it by force. We're the ones, we, the people of God, the believers. So at this critical time in history, we need to be awakened for the purpose of God. Yes. So King Cyrus made a proclamation. Yes. And uh, uh, defining that word proclamation again, we, we defined it. A decree. 
that has been written, that very important uh, piece of information that is placed and, and given and, and, and it is enforced to be taken out and to be carried out. Now, whether Cyrus was a true worshiper or not, uh, the word of God doesn't say that. But what, what the word of God says that he's a he was a Persian. He was a Persian. But the Lord of Lord God choose whom he will to allow his spirit to be upon and within. Yes. So uh, whether Cyrus, you know, was a worshiper, whether he followed and worked and, and prayed like uh, Daniel and the three Hebrew young men uh, three times a day, the word of God didn't say. Well, we really don't know. But what we do know is that he responded to God by being stirred up. And this is what you need to do. We who already, we profess, we proclaim the name of the Lord. So we need to, we need to move by God's spirit. He has appointed us. He has spoken to us and told you, come on, I, I know many of you know that the Lord has spoken to you. He's spoken to you and told you what he wants to do. And you're moving slowly, slowly. You, we need to move while we have breath in our body. Now in Ezra verses two through four, he proclaims, thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, with, in Jerusalem, which is at Judah. Who is there among you? This is what the word of God says. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, Yes, let the men of his place help him. Yes, so this is everybody, everybody that's up under your leader, everybody that's a part of the, the leader that is up under the sound of his voice need to put your hands to work. Yes, with silver, with gold. Now, this is where the money, this is the part right here, which uh, uh, kind of probably scares off, and we're praying that it will motivate more instead of scur off those who are, church folk or, or the believers. And it's saying to help with what? With silver, with gold and with gold and with goods and with beast beside. Now this is beside, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Yes, King Cyrus acknowledged these five things. Now, as I, as I stated, the first one was the Lord God of heaven that has spoken. That's the first thing that we need to remember, that the word God has spoken. The Lord God had spoken. Now, also, the Lord God of heaven has spoken. And the second here is to, to acknowledge that the Lord God had appointed him to build a temple for the Lord in Jerusalem. Yes. So that's the second one. Number two, number two, acknowledge what the Lord has appointed you to do in the kingdom. That's two. Acknowledge what the Lord has appointed you to do in the kingdom. What is it that he wants you to do in the kingdom? What he did with uh, uh, King uh, uh, Cyrus, the Lord appointed him to build the temple for the Lord in Jerusalem. But what has the Lord appointed you to do? That's the question. That's the second acknowledgement that you need to come to agreement with. What he has appointed you to do. And the third acknowledgement. He was freeing, this is what he was doing, uh, 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 King Cyrus was doing. He was freeing the Jewish exile to return home if they de desire to do so. The acknowledgement is this, that God wants to free you of any chains, weights, etc., for prosperity. That's the, that's the third acknowledgement. He wants to, the Father, wants to free you of any chains, Weights, anything that's holding you down, that's binding you or bound, that has you bound so that you will obtain prosperity. Now, here you're going to see something here in this third one that I just named. The, the acknowledgement or you acknowledging that he wants to free you of any chains and weights for prosperity. This here is a choice. You have a choice whether or not you want to be bound. You don't have to... <laughs> Excuse me. You don't have to remain in bondage. No. 
No, no, you don't have to. But if you choose to do so, you will remain that. That's, that's a choice of yours, but God chooses, the Father chooses to set you free. He wants you to be uh, 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 revived. He wants you to be restored. Uh, the whiners have a song that they sing, uh, 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 the restoration has finally come. I've been restored back to my place in God. Restoration has finally, re has finally come. God wants to revive you. He wants to restore you to the place that he appointed you and that he want you to be so that you can soar in him. Yes, so that you can prosper in him. And that is a choice. Being revived is a choice. Being restored is a choice. So if you're going around and you're saying that I haven't felt the spirit of God in some time, that's your choice. You know why? Because if you're claiming to, if you speak to be and you claim to be a believer and you read the word of God and our lifeline is the word of God, there's no need that you be bound because the word of God sets you free. Yes, the word of God does. Restoration is in God. Number four, the acknowledgement. This is the fourth acknowledgement or the fourth thing that you need to acknowledge that God wants you busy working in the kingdom. You need to acknowledge that God wants you busy working in the kingdom. It's not by choice. This is the one that's not by choice. You working in the kingdom. It's an order that you work in the kingdom. It is God uh, com commission that you work in the kingdom. Uh, Yes, uh, our pastor teaches, Bishop Ronnie Whittier, uh, he said there's two sins, two types of sins. There's a, a sin of, uh, 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 of commission and, and, and a sin of omission. Yes, you're sinning because uh, 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 you, 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 you're committing uh, uh, something that's not the will of God. And then you're, uh, you're, you're, you're omission because you're not doing what thus say the Lord. Yes, so uh, there's two types of sin, sin of commission and omission. Yes, so this is what we need to do. It's an acknowledgement that God wants us to be busy working in the kingdom. We need to acknowledge that, that he wants you. Now, this is what happened with King Cyrus. King Cyrus acknowledged, yes, he acknowledged that, that he was ordered, uh, those who, he ordered those who did, who, who did not wish to return, let me go back, he ordered those who returned uh, uh, out of bondage to be involved in the rebuilding of the temple. That's what he acknowledged. He acknowledged that those who uh, returned, those who were revived, uh, that they work in the rebuilding of the temple. They did not have a choice. They were ordered to do so. We are ordered to follow the lead of God, follow, follow the lead of our leader in the church. Now, I know there's mandates uh, now in the, in the uh, city of St. Louis around the country. Uh, now, as, as a result of uh, the COVID-19 and, and, and a spread of COVID-19 going on, uh, they're, they're uh, beginning to close in, uh, uh, many places as they did before. And there's mandates on different things. But if the Spirit of the Lord speak to your leader, I'm going to say this. The Spirit of the Lord speak to your leader to do a certain thing. And the Spirit of the Lord is not going to tell a man or a woman of God, those who are following the Spirit of God, to put him, God, the, the uh, uh, God's people in harm's way. But follow the lead of your pastor. Follow the lead of your leader. The Spirit of the Lord, God had uh, King Cyrus to give an order, a proclamation that even those that did not return, that did not return out of captivity, that they still had to participate in the building of the temple. So you have a mandate to follow your leader. You have a mandate to follow what thus said the Lord. Yes, so... So, so he ordered those who returned to be involved in the rebuilding of the temple. Now, that was the fourth. Now, number five, 
We got less than 20 minutes here, and then we, we will be closing about 20 minutes or so. Number five, this acknowledgement here is that you must support the ministry even if you don't hold an office or position. Oh, I know that's really just doing something to you right there. You must you hear this. This is how why I see a lot of folk who, uh, some who don't even claim to be saved. Uh, uh, even in the word of God, you will find that there were secret private supporters of, uh, of Jehovah, private supporters of the prophets who gave them finances, who, who blessed them with the needs and given them the needs that they were uh, uh, wanting and they were in need of. Uh, so uh, this acknowledgement here is that you must support, acknowledge that you support the ministry, even if you don't hold an office or position, and that means tithes, offering, free will, you need to give it. And you look, a lot of folk around you in, in society, if you look now, those folk who uh, are looking good and got a, a lot of stuff, they have a lot of things, good things, it's because, and they don't even have the spirit of God. And now I'm not telling you to follow this because there's something called success and good success. See, as believers or believers, we have good success. As Joshua stated in the book of Joshua, we want good success. Now, these folks, some of these folks who are non-believers, they have success. They have a lot of good stuff and good things. <coughs> it's because they are practicing principles that are designed for the kingdom of God, designed for the people of God seed planting and, and the liking. And that's why they have beautiful things, beautiful homes and, and beautiful automobiles. And I know this is material stuff and I'm, I'm not teaching or talking about materialism, but at this point, this here gets a lot of people position uh, 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 or attention when you start talking about money. Money, finances are necessary in the kingdom of God. Old Testament, all through the Old Testament, there were tithes and there were offerings given, given. They had to give. Everyone had to give. They had to make sacrifice. And here, the acknowledgement that you must, must have is that you must support the ministry even if you don't. You hear that? Even if you're not a deacon, even if you're not a, an usher, even if you're not the host or, or holding a position over in a certain office. It is your duty to give your tithes and your offering. What happened with King Cyrus is that he was encouraged or he encouraged those who did not wish to return to be supportive of the project, the building of the temple, what? Financially. He encouraged them to, to plant and to give financially, even if, they wasn't going to return. And even if you're not a part of certain things in the church, part of certain group, you should be when there's certain things going on, planting a seed. You should be participating in it. You know why? Because it's all built along and, and toward the same effort, the kingdom of God. It's all built toward the same effort. So he encouraged those who did not wish to return by being supportive of that project project financially. Now, look in, look in your own lives. We need to do things uh, that God has stirred us up to do. We need to be bold in our faith and know God is using us for the greater good of his kingdom. When we do, we also will see the blessings of the Lord just as Cyrus did. God charged Cyrus. This is what he did. This is what the Lord God did. God charged Cyrus to build a temple in Jerusalem. The task that Cyrus was given by God would seem rather strange for a Persian king. Yes, to undertake. Building a temple for a God that he did not even worship in a city that was holy for the Jewish people that had seemed to be an odd request, which it is. It's an odd request. But at the same time, when God gives an order, when God uh, gives a proclamation and places a proclamation, he, he stands for that to be done, for that to be acted up on. Yet God knew exactly what he was doing. We can rest assured that every promise and prophecy of God will come to pass. Now, at times, he may use the most unlikely people and circumstances, but he will honor his word. 
Have you seen the Lord use people that, that just, you say, why would he use him? It's because that person has a willing heart. That person listened to the voice. He did the first five, uh, acknowledged the five things when he was stirred by God or she was stirred by God. When you acknowledge him, when you do this, when you uh, uh, acknowledge what? That the Lord God of heaven has spoken to you. When you acknowledge, number two, that what the Lord has appointed you to do in the kingdom or what it, what it is that he wants you to do. And then number three, when you acknowledge that he wants to free you of any chains, weights, etc., for prosperity. And uh, it's your choice whether you can pro you want to prosper or not. No one's holding you hostage uh, whether or not you want to be revived. That's a choice of being restored or being revived. And then four, acknowledge that God wants you to be busy working in the kingdom. It's not by choice. That's an order. Everyone that named the name of Christ departing from iniquity must put their hands to, to something in the kingdom. And then five, acknowledge that you must support the ministry even if you don't hold an office or position. Yes, you must do that. The kingdom of God would be built as people respond to his stirrings. Yes, the, and, and everything else is being built up, people. Everything else is being built up. Look around. That's why I gave that uh, uh, story which is a true story regarding uh, uh, construction in and around the world. Everything else is being built up. So we need to make sure uh, that we build up things in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will be built as people respond to his stirring. So God is seeking to stir you up. He is seeking to raise you up. He's seeking to put you in a place that you've never been before. He wants you to be before people that you've never been before. He wants you to, to, uh, uh, to talk to uh, 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 groups that you've never spoken to before. He wants people to see your designs. He wants people to see your creativity in him. Yes, uh, prompting them to do great things for him. This is what God does. Cyrus was responding to the spirit of the Lord, impressing upon him to free the Jewish people. God can stir the hearts of unbelievers. I, I, I want you to know that. Don't believe those who are telling you that God can't. I don't care. There's unbelievers that God will stir them up. Yes, as a counselor, I have had uh, uh, hundreds of clients and hundreds of clients, and I've had different ones that, that had uh, uh, evil and wicked spirits on them, and they will tell me of, of these different types of spirits that they were born, they were not born with. Uh, there were some that loved uh, and had a desire for the opposite sex, uh, 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 both male and female having a desire for the opposite sex. But as I would counsel them, uh, taking the these and the thou's out in wisdom, they will speak to me and they would tell me, Mr. Vic, I wasn't born this way. This is just a choice that I have. Look, the devil choose to eat you alive. He choose to destroy you and convince your mind that you were created to be something that you were not. You were created to worship God. You were created to live after him and for him. God stirs the hearts of unbelievers. And it's because of that. That stirring is, is, is how and why you will get people to follow you and want that God that's in you. It's people that will seek after that God that's in you because they see something different. There's something different about you and about who that person is you're speaking of. God stirs the hearts of unbelievers. Many times in the word of God, we see the Lord moving in the lives of unbelievers. Yes, to fulfill his purpose. The father has the ability to soften what? The hardest of hearts. The word of God says, I tell you, look it up in Proverbs 21. The heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. The father has the ability to soften these hard hearts. And this is what he did for uh, King Cyrus's heart. A heathen, come from a heathen background. He can cause paradigms to shift and alter their thinking, their behavior, and their actions. Yes, this is what God does. So in our text, Cyrus was moved by the spirit of the Lord and his heart was stirred. And in response, he acted upon what God asked him to do. Ezekiel, the 11th chapter and 19th verse lets us know that God asked us, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out 
of your flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. This is what God will do. He will come in and take that stony heart, but he wants you to ask. He wants you to open up your mouth and say, God, take it away. Now, remember how you learned the word stirred and what it means? It means to awaken everyone. We know God can awaken the heart that is far from him. When you read uh, St. John, the sixth chapter and 44th verse, it reads, no man can, can come to, uh, uh, to, to me except uh, the father which had sent me draw him. This shows us that the Lord is always willing to stir the heart of the unbeliever. So you think that you just coming, you just made up your mind. That's what you think, that it was just me. That it was just, I just, I, I just, I decided. And I've heard people say this before. I'm, I'm going to come to the Lord when I get myself together. Let me tell you something. You'll never be able to get yourself together. It takes God to stir you up. He'll stir you up in your thinking. He'll stir you up in your mind. He'll stir you up in your heart. You'll find your hands being stirred up. You'll find your ears being stirred up. Your mouth gets stirred up. Your feet get to move in a certain way when you don't even want to move. It's because you're being stirred up in God. And more importantly, he goes into that heart and he'll take that heart and transform it. Take it from a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is what the power of God will do. The spirit of God will do. Look, this is what uh, uh, this shows us that the Lord is always willing to stir the heart of every unbeliever. For 70 years, they had been in captivity, 70 long years of a little more hope disappearing every day, 70 years of slowly forgetting who they were in God. But with the decree of Cyrus, hope revived within them and they were stirred to return to their homeland. They knew it would not be an easy task. They were well aware that the cities of their land now laid in ruins and would have to be rebuilt. Yes, but look at God. It would take commitment and sacrifice to rebuild the temple and their homes. But the spirit of the Lord, somebody say where you are, but the spirit of the Lord. Come on, say it. But the spirit of the Lord had stirred them and they had to respond. And this is what the spirit of God is doing to you right now. You that are listening. I got about less than 10 minutes here, but I want you to know the spirit of God is stirring your heart right where you are by and before the end of this program today, you would have made up in your mind and you are made up in your mind that I'm never going to walk the way I walked before. I'm going to change my language. I'm going to change the people I'm around. Why? Because I acknowledge that it is God. Why? I acknowledge that he has appointed me to be in him, a certain thing in him, and I'm going to walk in that. I acknowledge that he wants me to be free from the chains and the weights and the bondage and, and the weights that easily beset me. I want to prosper. Tell yourself, I want to prosper. And number four, I acknowledge and you acknowledge that God wants you busy working in him. That's why you're being transformed. And five, you acknowledge that you must support the ministry that you must give to him and you must plant. You must give him a portion of your increase. Why? Because it is him that gave it to you. Yes, the Lord had stirred them and they had to respond. Now, the people of God, we as believers, we have to respond. They begin what? And this is my last, I'm in my closing here. Yes, they were unified and gathered what was headed to build to the temple. They became unified. Unified. Even the unbeliever had to put his hand or her hand to work. Why? Because it was proclaimed by the almighty God. Look, when the almighty God proclaims that you do something, oh, everything around begins to shake. Everything around begins to move. Yes, you will find that people that were stagnated, people that couldn't walk, they're running now. People that could not even open their mouth, they're opening up their mouth and speaking. Where there was a mute or there was a person that was deaf, they hear what thus said the Lord. Having a desire alone to respond to God. Look, people, is it not enough? It takes action to see the plans and purposes of God to come to pass. If the temple was going to be rebuilt, it was going to take money and resources. Come on, tell somebody. It was going to take money and resources to build the temple. So the Israelites didn't, they didn't waver. 
at the prospect of, 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 of how difficult it would be or how much it would take, uh, what type of sacrifice it would take. They knew that the Spirit of God said that it must happen, and God had chosen for it to happen. He could have miraculously, God could do anything he wanted to. He could have uh, miraculously built the temple. They went to sleep one night and wake up, and the temple was could have been built. That's the power of God. That's the God that we know. That's the God that, that uh, works and moves powerfully. So in my closing, I want you to remember that. Acknowledge five things when stirred by God. Yes, you must acknowledge these five things. Just a, a, a quick recap. Acknowledge that the Lord God of heaven has spoken to you and no one else. Number two, acknowledge what the Lord has appointed you to do in the kingdom and what it is that you will do. Number three, acknowledge that he wants to free you of any change. He wants to uh, revive you. He wants to restore you. Acknowledge that. Speak that out of your own mouth. Speak life out of your mouth. Come on, do it. God can stir the hearts of believers and unbelievers. Last, uh, 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 no, fourth, uh, that acknowledge that God wants you to busy, be busy working in the kingdom. It's not by choice. I want you to remember that. It's not by your choice. Yes, it's not by your choice. It is mandated by God, just like the state mandate mass. It is mandated by God that you work as a believer in the kingdom. And five, acknowledge that you must support the ministry, even if you don't hold an office or proclaim have a title uh, or a so-called position. You have the position and you have the title that has been given you as giver to give what thus to give in the kingdom, which brings me to this point here. Yes. It brings me to point. I thank you so much. I thank all of you listeners and all of you that are a, a part of this, uh, Facebook uh, thread here. I thank you. Thank you so much. I pray that you got a word from the Lord. Uh, and I believe in my heart that you did. Uh, uh, and, uh, I want to encourage you that are listening that you can, uh, receive God's word. You can get what God has for you. Yes, that person or persons, uh, uh, that concludes our Bible study on tonight. To all of you listeners that have decided to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, yes, uh, the soul stirrer in your life after hearing this lesson, please follow the instructions given in Romans. Yes, Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 through 10, which says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The 10th verse goes on to say this, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Yes, so we thank you right now. And that being said, I know you love the Lord. And I'm going to pray for, to that, pers for that person uh, uh, in our closing that uh, decided to give Christ uh, 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 their life. And a person decided to, to be revived and restored. Uh, restoration has finally come. Yes, and you need to be restored back to your place in God. And when he restore you, he's going to restore you to a higher place. And when I say restore back to the place that as him, as your personal savior. But uh, we want to let you know here at Emmanuel Temple, where Bishop Ronnie Whittier is the pastor, that you have the opportunity to plant seed in this, uh, in this ministry. Yes, by tithes and offering, as we talked about in the lesson tonight. Yes, uh, we, there's an app called Givelify, and you have uh, the obligation, or you have the uh, you you have the right to go there to Emmanuel Temple Church of God org, our website, and give through Givelify, an app. Uh, also, you can go uh, and use the Cash App, and be careful. There's a lot of uh, uh, fraud going on. Use the dollar sign Emmanuel Temple E M M A N U E L T E M P L E S T L, and uh, give your through Cash App. Go to the website, EmmanuelTempleChurchOfGod.org. You can donate by giving through PayPal. You can also give by mail to your checks, money orders, or, or, or cashier's checks. 
uh, just bless the ministry uh, and go to Emmanuel Temple, write it to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, post office box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Also remember our Wednesdays, uh, we have noonday prayer at 12 o'clock and to one o'clock. On Thursday, intercessory prayer from six to seven. And remember at seven o'clock, uh, our pastor and our first lady, Lady Elect Winetta, they both will be in table talk at seven o'clock Saturday, uh, hour of power prayer. Yes. So if you would pray with me, dear father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, father, for acknowledging five things when stirred by you, dear God, we want you to lift us up and to anoint us in your power, God, stir it up in you, God, to move and to work in ministry, father, to get out of self and to trust you and to walk in the boldness and under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. We thank you, God, for your power. Let this word, Lord, rest in the minds and the heart of men. Let us go, God, to our different places, Father, and share this, Lord. Be stirred up to go into all the world and to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Oh, anyone sick, they are healed now. Anyone bound, they're set free. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Let everybody, wherever you are, say amen and amen. Emmanuel Temple is spreading the word of God to everyone in every place, one verse at a time. God bless you, and we pray for you and pray for us. Amen.